Well, hey guys, welcome to my daily update video. Just having a really great day wherever you're at. I am in Liverpool in the UK today. And in a moment, we're just gonna jump into part two of my little mini series on the working word. How we can apply the word of God, actually get God's word to produce, to do the work in our life. So often I think we're guilty of trying to do things ourselves that God calls us to do. It's like God calls us to do. God calls us to do the impossible. And one of the challenges and dangers in the church, I think especially in the West, is we sometimes think we can do this without God. I think we've actually done a great job of showing the world what we can do without God. And in these last days, God's calling us to go where we can't go, to do what we can't do without Him which is both terrifying and glorious if you look at it from the right perspective. The key is to allow the Word of God to work, to realize that we are not, we're not actually called to move mountains. We're called to speak the Word of God to mountains, and then God moves mountains. And then God looks at us and says, Graham, you moved a mountain, and you know we can feel all great. What we've really done is simply spoken the Word to the situation. So, really great truth. And uh, I have been applying this in my life for years and I'm constantly learning to do it more and more. Hey, I want to, let me do a few quick housekeeping things. First, if you are new to my ministry, my name's Graham. I was actually born here where I am, living, where I'm visiting today in Liverpool. Live in the United States in Massachusetts right now. Lead a little group of churches there and travel, teach people faith, the spirit-filled life. I love Jesus. So check out my website, gjm.org. Uh, my YouTube channel, I want to say a big thank you to all of our new subscribers. We now have over 250,000 people subscribed to our YouTube channel. Probably getting about half a million views a month now to that, so thank you so much for that. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there. Uh, thirdly, I'd encourage you to check out my ministry school, my email newsletter, lots of great things, all in the links below. Boom. And lastly, I want to say a big thanks to all of the partners of my ministry as well. We love and appreciate you who partner with us. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, I am here doing ministry in Europe right now because people send me, people invite me, I'm sure. That's easy, but people also send me. So thank you so much to our partners. If you're not yet a partner, pray about becoming one. Boom, link below, boom. Right, let's talk about this. Where I want to go today, I want to really drill down into how God's word works, the interplay of these things. So often, like just the idea of going to somebody, this makes sense to me, but I know if I go to somebody and I say the word of God works, well, frankly, nobody's gonna stand there and go, no, it doesn't. But how does, what does it actually mean to say God's word works? What does it, how does that happen? How does God's word, word work in our life? How do you take a book or an idea, which God's word might be to us at times, and get it to apply in something? And really, there's a very simple key you will see literally from, from Genesis 1 right through the end of Revelation. And I want you to grasp today, and if you'll understand this, you'll understand God's role and our role. Here's the key. The word and the spirit work together in union to produce things. The Word and the Spirit, in fact, the Spirit does all of the work. Everything really God is going to do, He does by the power of His Spirit. But He also does it by the power of His Word. In Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out void and formed. There was darkness on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Third verse in the Bible, and God said, let there be light. Literally, it says, light be in French, and light was. So in the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? The Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the deep, and then the Word of God came. And the Spirit of God took the Word of God and produced light, produced land, produced planets, produced, you know, cups of coffee, produced everything we see. <clears throat> Luke chapter one, the angel Gabriel brings a word to Mary. He doesn't bring a black book with a little ribbon on and gold at the edges and underlined by Graham, but it's a word of God. A word of God is a word of God. It doesn't really matter how that word is transmitted. A word from God is a word from God. And the angel Gabriel brings Mary a word of God and tells her, you're gonna have a son. I, basically Isaiah's prophecy, a virgin will conceive and bring forth a son is gonna be fulfilled in you. 
Mary asks, you see, I look at this, I look at Mary's question differently than I look at Zachariah's question a few verses earlier. When, when the angel came to Zachariah, Zachariah, how could this be? Mary is asking, how, how will this work? It's a different question because Mary's actually saying, I'm a virgin and what do you want me to do? I know how babies come. I've done biology 101 and um, I'm not understanding this. Like, how can I conceive because I don't know a man? So Mary's not asking a question of unbelief. What does the angel say to Mary? In effect, let me paraphrase, the angel's bringing Mary a word from God. The angel, the angel brings Mary the word. The angel then says, if you receive with meekness the engrafted word, 1 Peter 2, 2, the power of the Almighty will overshadow you and that thing born in you will be born of the Spirit. So Mary, Mary's response is, be it unto me according to your word. The angel brings the word, Mary accepts the word, be it unto me according to your word. She receives the word, the power of the Almighty, his name is the Holy Spirit, overshadows Mary and produces Jesus within her. And guys, it's really that simple. Everything God does, he does by the word and the spirit working together in tandem. You know, I learned this years ago in Concerning Healing, where I grew up in a, I grew up as a Christian in a church that really believed in healing. But if I'm honest, we hardly ever saw any healing or saw very little healing. And at times, you know, I'd go to a big conference or see a famous person and just people jump out of wheelchairs, blind eyes open, and I go, well, why? Is that a gift they have? Is that a special anointing they have? Why don't we see that in our church? Why don't I see it as a teenager? And I began seeking the Lord. <clears throat> and here's what God really showed me that absolutely changed my life and this still works today. He said, Graham, it's all about the Word of God. He said, your church believes in healing, but that's like, it's so easy to say we believe in things and it, that becomes a theoretical, theological, possible belief like we believe God can heal, we believe God does heal, we believe at times God will heal, but that's not actually believing He will heal right here and right now. And as a teenager, the Lord showed me this, and it's really so simple. Uh, what he basically showed me is you get what you preach. That when you preach, Jesus saves. The Holy Spirit is there to save people. When you preach, Jesus sets people free. The Holy Spirit comes to confirm the word, to set people free. And when you preach loud and clear and strong, Jesus heals, Jesus is the healer. Guess what happens? Holy Spirit shows up to heal people. And I've learned that so often in my life. I've seen it in so many ways. The key to seeing healing take place is to proclaim the Word of God and then to believe the Holy Spirit. That actually has very little to do with my great faith. I have faith that God will do what He said He will do. And God has said, if I will preach healing, He will confirm that Word with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. You know, one of my heroes, I was listening to this guy last night, a guy, German guy, Reinhard Bonnke. He's an amazing man of God. You know, probably led something like 96 million people to Jesus Christ. Amazing. And, uh, you know, he tells a story of being a young missionary in, I think it was Lesotho in Africa. And uh, people always assume, people always see the end and think, oh, it's always been easy for you. I don't want to misquote him, but I think he spent the first 10 or 15 years as a struggling missionary. You know, preaching to five or ten people and people would sleep during his messages and, you know, people stayed away by the thousands. You know, struggling, struggling financially, struggling to see a little church mission filled and, you know, sharing the gospel with dedication but not seeing much results. And one day this guy decided, you know, he prayerfully decided he was going to really need a breakthrough in his town. So he hired the largest hall in town, 3,000 seater hall. And he invited the most famous healing evangelist in Africa to come and speak for three nights to preach the gospel and pray for the sick. Plastered the town with posters. 3,000 people came. How exciting. Night number one, he goes to the hotel to pick up the famous evangelist. And the evangelist calls down and says, I'm not coming. God's told me not to go. And he's like, come back for me tomorrow. So Rana Bonke goes to this hall, 3,000 people waiting for the famous evangelist to come. Rana Bonke says, I'm really sorry, the evangelist can't come tonight, but if you come back tomorrow, he'll come. And uh, the next day, Rana Bonke goes to pick up the evangelist at the hotel. The evangelist has, left, has gone home and he left him a note. He says, 
God told me not to be here. You preach. And Ryan up bonk, he's like standing in the hotel lobby with a letter. And in the end, he goes to the hall. There's now 6,000 people, 3,000 packed inside, a few thousands outside. And, and he's like, what do I do? Send these people home? So he decides he'll preach. And he stands up and he preaches the gospel with everything he's got. He knew how to do that. He just didn't know how to see the sick healed. And then at the end, he's thinking like, God, what do I do? And suddenly, he hears a voice in his head or in his heart, which says this. The voice says, my word in my mouth is just as powerful as my word in your mouth. And at first, he's thinking, that's blasphemous. That can't be right. And then he's, as he's preaching, he's kind of thinking about it. Yeah, God's word in God's mouth. It's just the same as God's word in my mouth. The, what he realized is the power isn't about the mouth. The power is in the word. And as he's thinking about this, kind of preaching, suddenly the Holy Spirit says, call all the blind people forward. So he says, I want everybody blind in the room to come forward. About 20 blind people come forward. And then he doesn't pray for them. He speaks God's word to them. Not, doesn't pray like, oh God, please come and heal these people. He just suddenly lets out a yell, blind eyes open. And suddenly people start screaming over the room. I can see, I can see, I can see. What happened? He realized the power wasn't in the evangelist. The power wasn't in him or some of the, the power was in the word of God. And when he spoke the word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit came and confirmed the word of the Lord. Yeah, that's guys how we do it. And I tell you today, wherever you're at, today as I walk around the city of Liverpool, I can speak God's word and God will honor it. Holy Spirit will bring to pass the words we declare with boldness and persistence in Jesus' name. Boom. Guys, I'm going to be back tomorrow. I'm actually going to be talking about the unspoken word of God. Interesting idea. And we'll explore that more tomorrow. Hey, again, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button down there, if you will. And I'd love to see you soon in the plan of God. Bye.